Welcome everybody to this edition of Attention Talk Video. I'm your host, ADHD and Attention Coach, Jeff Copper. I'm here today to talk about executive function. Um, in the world of ADHD, we tend to make observations based off of uh, behavior. Uh, behavior is a symptom of cognitive behavior. Thing about cognitive behavior, it's intangible. Um, so it's kind of hard to see. Not going to address that here really today, but I do want to talk about Dr. Russell Barkley's model on executive function and to kind of give you a sense of it and maybe how to reframe it, look at it and understand it in a way that really makes a little bit of sense. Back in uh, 2010, um, at the time, actually even today, uh, if you take a, a, a test for executive function, ADHD doesn't show up as an impairment yet. Uh, Dr. Barclay argued there's seven different ways to look at this and ADHD has to be an executive function impairment. Um, I'm not going to get into the details of that. So what he looked at is, you know, basically either ADHD is not an executive function or the tests are wrong. When you're to look at the test, the issue really was there was no unified definition of what executive function was. So he set about trying to define it. One of the things that researchers agreed on is that self-regulation is a big one. It's a, it's a major one. So he started to set out to define executive function, how they grow. And what we have here is just, he talks about the executive, these are mind tools that he has and they uh, develop over time. So the first level is self-awareness. Human beings have the ability actually to kind of be aware of ourselves, to, to notice ourselves, maybe look at it in a third person. And to, if you have that, you have the ability for self-restraint. Uh, the next level is visual imagery, the, the ability to see pictures inside of your mind or to visualize the future. There's also verbal working memory, which is more than the mind's voice. Um, that is, we talk inside of our heads to ourselves towards a goal. Then there's emotional self-regulation. Human beings are one of the only animals that actually can change emotions. Now, while it's difficult, um, it is possible. And the last mind tool is playing with information in our mind, the mind's playground. So this is the way he orders it when he's talking about it. What I like to do is he talks about ADHD also as being, think of the brain as a two-level system. You have the reflexive kind of emotional brain, and then you have the, exe the effortful executive functioning brain. That's the effortful thinking brain. So if we take his model and we just rearrange it a little bit, <clears throat> what I like to do is the, the, the basic the, the primitive level is self-regulation. That's the automatic brain. That's where you have to have the self-awareness uh, to be able to pause and change your emotions in order to restrain yourself. Uh, again, that's to stop and say, hmm, I don't, I want to go play video games or I want to go do something, but I'm gonna pause and not do that. Uh, think of like also like maybe an alcoholic, right? I'm going to be self-aware and realize I'm gonna pause, I really would like to have another drink, but I'm going to change my emotion around that and restrain myself to leave. It's very helpful to begin to think of it like this. The next level is really the, um, the, the executive function side of me, and that's thinking towards a goal. That's the ability to use visual imagery and self-talk to play with information in your mind towards a goal. Basically, it's thinking inside your head. Often I have a couple exercises where I'll give somebody a several words and I'll ask them to repeat them back to me in alpha order. I do that for them to realize is that's actually thinking in your mind towards a goal. I usually use about six words and people struggle with it. Often they like, I'll give them the exercise, they go, oh my God. So they actually have an emotional reaction because it's effortful. And I really want to, to share this because if, if you understand this model and you start to take a look at executive function and you look at what's out there, you can begin to understand a lot of what's going on. Most tip tricks and strategies are really kind of focused in on that self-regulation, uh, using willpower to pause and downregulate. What I find often is thinking is difficult inside your head. And so when that happens, people emotionally really just want to escape. Anyway, the point of this video is to take Dr. Barkley's model and put it into a schematic that we could really kind of understand and that you could begin to think about the trouble areas. I often do a lot of coaching people around root cause. There's a lot of uh, issues like uh, uh, people with ADHD so I have a hard time um, getting in the flow. Once I'm in the flow, I'm fine. That's actually uh, the way I see it, uh, the loading of information in your mind, basically the booting up of your working memory. So if you understand that's the root cause, you can kind of try to solve for it. Anyway, 
I don't want to get into too much detail here today, but I really just wanted to introduce this concept as a model for you to begin to look at understanding Dr. Barkley's executive functionings, rearranging them in a way that we can all make some sense, gain some insight and problem solve. So with that, thoughts, I'd be interested in your comments. Does this help bring some clarity to things? Also, if you're new to our channel, please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. We release tips like this on a weekly basis. Also, um, if you like our work, please uh, thank, hit the thanks button. We certainly appreciate contributions because uh, we provide this to you to help those with ADHD in need. So with that, we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Attention Talk video. Take care.